Looking to improve your game? You can now sign up for CFB Pro using the promo code LVD, get access to articles and deck guides by the world's best. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at another historic deck, and as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, we're taking a look at Journey to Eternity, a black-green graveyard deck featuring the three mana legendary enchantment aura from Rivals of Ixalan that enchants one of our creatures, and when the enchanted creature dies, we get to return it to the battlefield under our control, and we also get to transform Journey to Eternity into Cave of Eternity, a legendary land that makes one mana of any color, and for five mana we can tap Cave to Eternity and return target creature card from our graveyard to the battlefield, so we get access to this very powerful repeatable reanimation engine, and we've got some nice creatures to reanimate in this deck. We've got Izoni Thousand Eyed, a 6 mana 2-3 legendary elf shaman, that when it enters the battlefield makes a number of 1-1 one, one black and green insect creature tokens for each creature card in our graveyard, so that can definitely get out of hand, and for a black and a green we can also sacrifice a creature to gain one life and draw a card, so that's also a nice way to potentially put additional creatures in the graveyard to then reanimate with her Cave to Eternity, and Izoni combines especially nicely with Crater Hoof Behemoth, the 8 mana 5 5 Mythic Rare Beast with Haste from Jumpstart. And when Crater Hoof enters the battlefield, creatures we control gain Trample and get plus X plus X until end of turn, where X is the number of creatures we control. So if we can end of turn reanimate Izoni, make let's say 10 tokens, and then reanimate a Crater Hoof Behemoth on the following turn, we can usually deal upwards of 100 damage. And then another nice one is Massacre Worm, a 6 mana 6-5, six, that when it enters the battlefield, it gives opposing creatures a minus 2 minus 2 until end of turn, and whenever a creature an opponent controls dies, that player also loses 2 life, so this is great against any opposing token decks. So these are some of the heavy hitters we can reanimate, and of course we are also kind of ramping towards them by transforming Journey to Eternity into Cave of Eternity, and we do have some mana creatures, so we're definitely capable of hard casting some of these creatures as well. So let's take a look at the rest of the deck. At one mana we've got the full playset of Lunar Elves to speed things up a little. Great in any green deck and no exception here. And then we also have the full playset of Stitcher Supplier. This might be one of the more important creatures in the deck as it's a great way for us to fill the graveyard. When it enters the battlefield or dies we get to mill three cards. And putting Journey to Eternity on Stitcher Supplier is also perfect because when it dies and comes back to the battlefield we get to mill three additional cards. And it's also a creature we don't really mind sacrificing or killing in the first place. And then at 2 mana we've got the full playset of Fiend Artisan, a 1-1 one, one Nightmare that gets plus 1 plus 1 for each creature card in our graveyard, so this very quickly turns into a giant threat by itself. And then for X and a hybrid black or green mana we can tap Fiend Artisan and sacrifice another creature to search our library for a creature card with converted mana cost X or less and put it onto the battlefield, and we can only use this at sorcery speed. So this is an additional way for us to search up a Stitcher Supplier if we need to fill the graveyard, and it's very cheap to search up Stitcher Supplier since we only need 2 mana in addition to sacrificing a creature, and we do have some expendable creatures in this deck besides Stitcher Supplier, like the Goat token from Most Rider, which we'll get to in a second. Then we also have 4 copies of Skull Prophet, a 3-1 that taps for black or green, and we can also tap it to mill 2 cards, so if we don't need the mana we can keep on filling the graveyard to fill it up for Fiend Artisan, maybe we can escape a Woast Rider or just fill it up to find more of our heavy hitters to then reanimate with our Journey to Eternity. And then we've got the full place of the Woast Rider, also perfect fit for this deck. A 3 mana 3 2 that when it enters the battlefield is joined by an 0 1 white goat creature token, and we can sacrifice another creature at any time to scry one. So this also gives us access to an additional sacrifice engine besides our Fiend Artisan. So if we put our Journey to Eternity on Stitcher Supplier, we'll have plenty of ways to sacrifice it ourselves if the opponent doesn't end up killing our Stitcher Supplier instead. And then we can also escape Woast Rider from the graveyard, exiling four other cards. Typically want to get rid of lands to keep as many creatures in the graveyard as possible for undergrowth. And then Woast Rider enters the battlefield with two additional plus one plus one counters, and we once again get the Goat token as well. Then we've got our four copies of Journey to Eternity. It is legendary, but we can still use the ability to return a creature when it dies to good effect, even if that means losing the extra legendary land. And then we also have two copies of Liliana, a Waker of the Dead. This used to be Vraska as an extra sacrifice outlet, but now between the Woe Strider, Fiend Artisan and even Phyrexian Tower in the mana base, we don't really need access to more sacrifice outlets, and instead having a discard outlet can be useful if we end up with a few of these expensive creatures in hand that we cannot cast. So Liliana's plus one says each player discards a card, and each opponent who can't loses three life, and then we can also use it as removal with the minus three, giving target creature minus x minus 
minus x until end of turn, where x is the number of cards in our graveyard, and if we can ever get to the minus 7 ultimate, it can also win us a game as we get an emblem saying at the beginning of combat on our turn, we can put a creature card from any graveyard onto the battlefield under our control, and it also gains haste. Then we also have two copies of Rankle, Master of Pranks. This also has a lot of different purposes in this deck, as a way to potentially sacrifice our own creature that has a Journey to Eternity enchanting it. It can also help us discard some of those expensive creatures if they're stuck in our hand. And of course it's also a flying haste threat that can take out opposing planeswalkers. Then we've got two copies of Ravenous Chupacabra as an all-purpose creature removal spell that we can also reanimate. And then we've got our heavy hitters with Massacre Worm, Izoni, and Crater Hoof Behemoth. And then Mana Base also includes two copies of Phyrexian Tower, which is an amazing addition for the deck, as an additional sacrifice outlet to make sure we can transform our journey to eternity. And then it also ramps if we sacrifice a creature, allowing us to maybe play some of these more expensive cards ahead of schedule. And then we also have seven Swamps, seven Forests, four Overgrown Tomb, and four Woodland Cemetery. So that's our deck now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does all right we're on the play with what looks like a keepable hand we'll need to find a sacrifice outlet at some points to transform journey but we've got plenty of those in the deck between fiend artisan woe strider and even fraction tower turn one forgotten cave so this could be a goblin stack And yep, there's a Wily Goblin. Well, our hand's not looking great at the moment. Do I even bother putting Journey on Skull Prophet? Yeah, it's probably okay. Can hold off any hasty goblins and then we can still mill ourselves for two. At least a Mono Red deck is not gonna have any way of exiling the Skull Prophet, so... Says Journey is transforming if the Skull Prophet goes away. Sadly, we milled Phyrexian Tower. Alright, Voice Rider can also be escaped soon. And we're pretty close to just casting a Massacre Worm, which is going to be pretty effective. So let's see if we die to a Moxus this turn. It's going to be Matron. Into maybe Moxus or Prospector. And there's Prospector. But no other place for now, so let's mill for two. And land is a good draw. So let's play Massacre Worm. And sadly, Prospector doesn't hold priority, so our opponent didn't have a chance to sacrifice all their goblins in response to the Massacre Worm to prevent eight damage. Another Goblin Matron. I'm sure they're just going to try and cast a Muxus next turn, but once again, they're going to be facing Massacre Worm here. And once again, Prospector doesn't hold priority, so your opponent ends up taking more damage than they should have. So on the one hand, it would be nice if the game held priority whenever there's like a Skirk Prospector or Fraxian Tower in play, in case you want to sacrifice something in response. But on the other hand, it would also slow down the game significantly, so it's kind of a tough situation. But yeah, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, with a bit of a slow hand, no one or two mana plays. But we do have Journey and Woe Strider as a sack engine. I'm gonna try it. And then our best draw would be Stitcher Supplier. Alright, I'll take an Elves. So next turn we get to play Woe Strider, maybe. As we see an Urban Utopia, so this could be a Flood of Tears Omniscience combo deck. I can play Woe Strider now. 
And then next turn play Journey to Eternity on the Elves, transform it. And then Liliana can discard Massacre Worm, but it's going to be a pretty slow process of getting it back. I can start attacking their hands with Liliana, maybe that's just a play here. Make it difficult for them to assemble their combo. And then I can probably discard Massacre Worm for now, and then next turn maybe an extra journey. Discards Tamyo. It's not a card we want to see in play because it prevents us from discarding cards. Alright, Fiend Artisan's nice because that means I can search up a Stitcher Supplier next turn. So we'll discard Journey, I believe. You think too much. Play Fiend Artisan. Hit for one. And then ideally we draw lands so we can play Journey and get a Stitcher Supplier. So time you pluses. Opponent's got three non-land permanents in play already. So yeah, we can't cause our opponent to discard cards at this point. Taimyo is at 6. But I mean, pretty close to ultimating Liliana here as well, so plusing could still be worthwhile. Could also transform Journey, but... Again, there's nothing too exciting to get back. So I think the play is to plus Liliana. Discard Fiend Artisan. Doing things my way. Go after Tamyo and play with Strider. Oh, is impolite. <laughs> so Tamyo couldn't minus on. three anymore. No flood of tears in the graveyard yet. But that's maybe what we're looking for. Tries to find a Narset instead. They did reveal a Flood of Tears, so maybe they had one in hand, but they can't cast it at the moment. And it's just a Risen Reef. So we can ultimate Liliana. Ooh, Stitcher Supplier. That's a nice one. So I can play Stitcher Supplier. Play Journey on Supplier. Sacrifice it to the Voice Rider. This cry, I guess, doesn't matter here. Mill some more cards. And then we're kind of just looking for a Crater Hoof Behemoth to get back with Liliana's ultimate. To just win the game right now. Ooh, there's a crater hoof. Do I have any way of getting that in the graveyard here? I don't think so. And then this turn I can get back Massacre Worm. Or I could keep it on top and mill Stitcher Supplier and the next turn we can kill them. But it's pretty important that I take out Time you while I can. So let's bottom the crater hoof. And then ultimates. And move to combats. Get back Massacre Worm. Rise and shine, my if I send everyone at my opponent, what happens? They can block Fiend Artisan, take 9 plus 2 more. So they go to 1. I should probably take out Tamiya then. To play it safe. Because even if I sacrifice a creature to the voice strider to grow fiend artisan, they would just be blocking it with the grazer. So opponent lets damage happen. More data will we'll pass. 
We were so close to getting the kill with Crater Hoof. So our opponent's got three non-land permanents in play. They need a fourth for Flood of Tears to combo off, so it's not going to happen this turn. Alright, so let's see if we can mill a Crater Hoof Behemoth here. Alright, no Crater Hoofs, but we can just attack with everyone and win the game. Alright, so even Tamyo not letting us discard a card from the opponent's hand didn't end up mattering too much in the end, as we got to see a Liliana Emblem. Didn't see that one every day. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. A keepable hand. Elves into Artisan into maybe a turn 3 Chupacabra. And then we'll see if we can just hard cast Izoni or if we try and find a way to discard it. Facing Grixis, probably control. So our game plan's pretty simple. If we can transform Journey, we probably win the game. If not, it's gonna be an uphill battle. The Dragonfire exiling the Elves, so we don't even get to grow Fiend Artisan here. Lazav, so they might be playing the Lazav plus Kroxa combo as well. Not a whole lot I can do here. Don't want to sack Artisan just to play Chupacabra here. So we'll just play another Artisan. And our hand is getting pretty clunky, so eventually finding maybe a Rankle could be nice. And yeah, they've got the combo here. I guess I found my discard outlets. And then I could technically double block, but we're just gonna play Chupacabra. Hit for six. Nicole Bolas gets her last card. Alright, elves means I can maybe sacrifice the elves to the fiend artisan. And what are we searching up? X equals two, I can get another fiend artisan. That's decent, I suppose, or I can get a Stitcher Supplier to fill the graveyard some more. I think I like getting another Fiend Artisan and then next turn maybe gets a Stitcher Supplier. Although getting Supplier now would let me attack with the untapped Fiend Artisan that we still have. Nah, no, let's get more Fiend Artisans. And then do I want to trade here? I guess I don't hate it. But I may be better off waiting. Especially if they have another Nicol Bolas in hand. I'm looking for new minions. Liliana can They're kill one Fiend too. Artisan. If it hurts too much. I think they're just dead now. Rankle, attack with all. Alright, so interesting game against uh, Grixis Titan Shift deck with the Croxa plus Lazav combo. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. This hand's not gonna cut it. This is a bit better. Don't have a journey to eternity, but we get to go supplier into probably Fiend Artisan on two. And then turn three, I can maybe just activate the Fiend Artisan. So I think I can get rid of Skull Prophet here and then keep Chupacabra as a bit of interaction. Ooh, there's journey to eternity. 
and we'll have the Fiend Artisan in play to make sure we can transform Journey. Facing a Green-White Spirit Dancer deck, alright. And in the graveyards, there's nothing too exciting to get back right away. I'll just keep Fiend Artisan on defense for now. Second Alsade. They are missing some auras to put on their Spirit Dancer. So with this I can only use it sorcery speed, so I'll have to do it now. And then I probably just get another Stitcher Supplier. And then we can play the Elf, or I can play Chupacabra, but they've got double Alsade to protect it anyway. So yeah, let's get another Stitcher Supplier here. X equals 1. And we'll have a very full graveyard in just a second here. As we already see Izoni. And we'll have no difficulty activating our Cave to Eternity next turn. So Izoni looks like a nice first target and our opponent just concedes as they're too far behind. Alright, sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw and this uh, Fiend Artisan is going to get very large very quickly. Don't hate it. Triple Stitcher Supplier, we're in great shape if we ever find a Journey to Eternity. Definitely playing Fiend Artisan on turn 2. So on turn 3 we can play a couple more Suppliers and grow the Fiend Artisan. Facing Mono Black. And a rat colony. Alright, it's been a while since I've faced the rats. So, Massacre Worm's gonna be pretty good in this matchup is my guess. Now the rats got a few upgrades as well with pack rats, among other cards. So we might see those as well. They're not splashing blue, sometimes you see blue in these rat colony decks for Tetsuko. So what's my play? I can play one Stitcher Supplier, sacrifice another to get the fourth Supplier, if that's still in the deck. I guess I should start there then. X equals one. Could also get a Lanor Elves to just hard cast the Zoni. Yeah, maybe that's even better actually. And then he only just makes a million tokens to block the rat colony. In the meantime, Fiend Artisan a 7-7. Seven, seven. And it's only gonna get bigger. Alright, Piper of the Swarm gives rats menace, so we can't single block them, so I'll take six. So what's my play for now? Can escape Boy Strider, that's not terrible. And then maybe attack with a Fiend Artisan. Or we can stay back to block and then next turn just slam down an Izoni to win the game essentially. Anything else I can get with a Fiend Artisan here? I guess I can search up another Boy Strider as well, Sacking Supplier. Yeah, that doesn't sound terrible. Rankle would also be decent. So we've got a lot of options. I'll go with uh, Voice Strider here. <laughs> and we'll pass. And then next turn Izoni should be quite strong. And there's a pack rat. So we can double block one of the rats. 
and even get a bit of scry value here by sacking the goats. Although I guess it's gonna get milled by the supplier, but I can get rid of any non-creature spell essentially. Elves can go to the graveyard. Ooh, there's a crater hoof. If we can find a journey, we're in business. But for now, Izoni will do. Yeah, let's attack with a Fiend Artisan, why not? Let's see if our opponent has a way to get past all my insects. Piper steals Fiend Artisan, but that's not gonna do it here. All right, sweet. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw with a reasonable hand. Especially if we find Journey, we have everything in place with Liliana discarding Crater Hoof and then uh, Strider as a sacrifice outlet. Facing a blue red a riddle form deck, so we're gonna get attacked by a bunch of flying creatures. And yeah, we don't have any flying creatures at the moment to get in the way. Don't have that many in the deck. Rankle is one of them. So this could be a tough matchup. Down to 15 we go. Playing Liliana doesn't really accomplish all that much. It soaks up a bit of damage. I think I would rather just play Woe Strider for now. And hit for three. Maybe next turn I can mill myself for two with profit and then play Liliana minus three and kill something. And yeah, we're taking quite a beating here. It's gonna be shocked to take out Strider. I'll keep the goat around since it can be useful if we draw a rankle. Steam vents untapped. That doesn't bode well. Maybe a spell pierce here. So, I mean, I can mill myself for two with Skull Prophets. Then we have three cards in Graveyard. That's still not enough for Liliana to take out Dorat. I guess I'll attack for three. An opportunity to increase my influence. Discard Crater Hoof. They had a Brazen Borrower, so they definitely have another way of enabling Riddle Form here. Yeah, flying creatures are definitely a weakness of our deck. And Shock to the Face will do it. GG's, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a pretty nice hand. Although we are missing green mana, so that's something we'll have to look for. Although Artisan could technically sack Supplier to get a Lenor Elves as well, even without green mana. So that's still potentially a way for us to cast our journey. Although we would prefer to play journey on the supplier to begin with. We mill the rankle. It 
turn one commune with dinosaurs, so a dinosaur tribal deck finds a rootbound crag. So not sure yet if I'm sacking supplier for an elf or if we're doing something else. Alright, there's a green mana. So probably just start by attacking and then play journey second main, hopefully they don't have any removal here. Doesn't seem to be the case. And the next turn we can have a transform journey, even a Phyrexian tower to make two mana. So I can activate my journey right away. Or my cave, I should say. Thrashing Brontodon. It's gonna be a turn late here at Destroying Journey. Make two mana, sacking Supplier. Hope to mill something juicy. I guess Rankle's a little bit better here than uh, another Fiend Artisan. Sack with both. And then we can sacrifice Supplier to the Rankle trigger. So we'll discard, sacrifice. Don't really need to draw. Discard Journey. There's Izoni and Chupacabra, so now our graveyard is nicely stocked. Ribjar Raptor. It's probably not gonna save them here. So just bring back Chupacabra, kill the Ribjaw, attack for lethal. Alright, that was a pretty fast game. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with what looks like a keepable hand. We'll have to shock ourselves to play turn one elves, but then next turn we get to go profit plus supplier. Hopefully find a journey to eternity soon. Facing turn one the crypt breaker and perfect, there's a journey. So let's stick to the plan. And hope we don't get thought seized here. Because we really want to put the journey on the Stitcher Supplier and then Phyrexian Tower can help us transform it. Turn two Priests, so our opponent may be on the Mono Black Godfarer's Gift deck. Even attacks with a Crib Breaker. Uh, I guess I'll take it since I want to put journey on Supplier here. And then I guess I don't have to sacrifice it to Phyrexian Tower right away, so we'll play another Elves instead. Because the Mono Black deck's usually not going to have any ways of messing with my enchantment or exiling my creature here. And then I get to mill myself with Skull Prophets. And next turn we should be able to activate the cave. Opponent can draw a card tapping three zombies with the Crypt Breaker here. And then still maybe two mana from Priest to do something. And then in the graveyard hopefully we can mill like a Massacre Worm. Izoni could be good. I guess there's no downside to just sacking the Supplier. Interesting, our opponent didn't target us with the Priest of Forgotten Gods, so we couldn't sack the Stitcher Supplier. Not a play you see very often. So there's a Gate to the Afterlife to combo with God Pharaoh's Gift. End of turn, we can mill ourselves with Prophets. And there's Woe Strider as well. Alright, so our opponent had a pretty efficient turn here. Let's see if we can do one better. Alright, so probably start by sacrificing Stitcher Supplier to Phyrexian Tower.
All right, still didn't mill anything amazing. Rankle is okay, I guess. But I still have enough mana to mill myself with profit first. Also, that didn't improve things. So I can activate my cave, get back Fiend Artisan, or just another supplier to keep digging. I think I prefer getting supplier here. Rankle, I guess, can attack and then sacrifice supplier, but my opponent has plenty of sacrifice fodder as well. Just get another supplier. And then hopefully next turn we can find something juicy. I like this Crater Hoof Behemoth is looking mighty fine. Opponent could easily get a Godfarrow's Gift in play here. And hopefully they don't have a Massacre Worm to discard, because that's gonna hurt. And we'll sacrifice Stitcher Supplier. Chupacabra could be okay. There's Gate to the Afterlife. And do we have a Massacre Worm to discard here? That's what they need. Otherwise, they might just be dead to Crater Hoof. Alright, transforms gates. They get one more trigger to discard. Discards Fiend Artisan. So no Massacre Worms. Gate gets Gift. And we'll see what they get. Goes for a giant fiend artisan. Alright, so that is lethal, because they can sacrifice their own priests with a uh, strider to grow this up to a 15-15, so I will have to chump it. So that might mean Craterhoof is no longer lethal. But we'll see here. Izoni is also looking pretty strong. Opponents got one more mana, and they concede. Ah, oh, that's too bad. So were they just dead to us getting back Crater of Behemoth? So we would have four creatures in play. Crater Hoof gives all creatures trample and plus four plus four, so... Yeah, I guess it would just be lethal by itself. And if somehow we needed to play differently, we could maybe get back Izoni. And then just chum block, and then the turn after Crater Hoof would be more than enough to win the game. Alright, so we got to kind of beat the metagame version of our Black Green Journey deck. I do think the Mono Black Gift deck is a bit more consistent than our Black Green Journey deck, but we can potentially go over the top even if they manage to get the Gift in play, if we get to chain together cards like Izoni and Crater of Behemoth, as we saw in this match. And people are starting to pack more answers for Godfather's Gift in the form of a Braid to destroy artifacts, so we can potentially sidestep those with our Journey to Eternity as well, especially once we transform it into a land. There's not that many commonly played cards that can deal with a Cave to Eternity, so that's another advantage. But if we play sideboarded games, we will need to be prepared for Graveyard Aid, like Gravedigger's Cage and Leyline of the Void, by bringing in cards like Reclamation Sage and Thrashing Brontodon to answer them. Especially Brontodon is nice, because we can also use it to destroy our own Journey to Eternity and transform it, so that's another neat little trick we have available. But our plan B of just playing our creatures normally without access to the graveyard is not going to be as effective as the one from the Mono Black God vs. Gift deck, since we don't have cards like Priest of Forgotten Gods and Crypt Breaker that can potentially carry a game by themselves. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd. Thank you.